I'm Steve for This Week with Cars, and today I am in Galena, Illinois. And behind me is President Ulysses S. Grant's house. President Grant lived and worked in Galena, Illinois before the Civil War. And after he returned from the Civil War as a war hero, the city of Galena gave him this house. This is the town that he called home. This is where he did all of his voting from, even when he was in Washington. And today I'm in Galena for the Vintage Triumph Registers National Show. Today is the day of their Concours event, which indicates that it should be the best of the best cars that are here at the show. Let's go check it out. The car show is in Depot Park, just across the tracks from the historic train depot. Here on the banks of the Galena River, this is the parking lot before we get to the show. Plenty of cars here in the parking lot that chose not to enter the show. Even some MG and Porsche owners have come. Great little Alfa Romeo. I even found this reproduction Ford Model A here in the parking lot. Looks like this was built sometime in the 1980s. No idea what kind of running gear it's using. Looks like all cars were allowed to enter the show. They have taken up a large area of the park down here. Let's start with the TR2s and TR3s. It's a gorgeous TR3. This is a small mouth. It's a beautiful color. They probably drive this car. Looks like it has a few modifications to make it easier to be streetable. Next to that, another TR3. This time a large mouth. You can see the difference between the large mouth and the small mouth TR3s, which is reminiscent of the TR2. Here we've got a TR3. And here's a TR2 right here. You can see the grill is inset on the TR2. It's a great little car. I did have a yellow TR2 at one point. And I have owned a couple TR3s, but I haven't held on to them. And we've got four more TR3s here at the end. This TR3 is showing off its starting handle. Have a couple more TR3s hiding under the tree here. This one has a set of vintage looking rally lights on it. Maybe even added a stereo system behind the seats. Now we have the TR4s. Being as these are parked this way, I may not be able to get to every car. But if we see something interesting, I'll try to check it out. This one has an interesting air dam on the front. I love the stripes on this one. Very reminiscent of the TR250. Looks like they have Mazda Miata seats in this one. Cas Kastner has signed the glove box. He, of course, was the competition director for Triumph. This TR4 is wearing a vintage set of cosmic wheels. These are most commonly seen on minis. It's pretty neat to see that on a TR4. The green Triumph behind it is wearing wire wheels. You can see the difference between the wires and the disc wheels on this TR4 over here. Now here's the TR250 class. It would be likely that all of these cars are TR250s as the TR5s, which is the petrol injection version of this, was not shipped here to the United States. Here in America, this model that came after the TR4 was shipped usually with Stromberg carburetors instead of the petrol injection system that they were able to have in the UK. This TR250 has an interesting, I guess I'd call it a bikini top, but really it's reminiscent of the top 
uh, half that you would have on a Surrey top. So on the Surrey top, you would have the hard top window section back here. You could either have a soft top or a hard top section here uh, above the drivers. Here are the TR6s. As far as I've seen so far, this looks like the largest group of cars here. The TR6 is basically a TR250 or TR5 with a new bodywork design. Again, here in America, these were shipped here with dual Stromberg carburetors instead of the petrol injection system that made more power that they got to enjoy elsewhere in the world. This looks like a very fine example of one. The steering wheel has been changed, but it looks like this car has been restored to a very high standard. This TR6 has had the bumpers removed. Looks like this is very much a driver car. This one here has the overdrive badge, indicating that it has an overdrive transmission, giving it six forward gears, as you can have overdrive in third and fourth. There's cars here of every color, and I have finally found one that is similar to the TR6 that I owned. That is this one right here. This is the color, the TR6 that I owned. Oh, this one has a supercharger on it. It looks like it's being fed by a single SU carburetor. It has been upgraded with an aluminum radiator and electric fan. It probably needs that with as much power as this engine makes now. They've added a supercharged badge to the back of this car. Not sure what kind of car that came off of. This TR6 has had the Stromberg carburetors changed into fuel injection. They have a sensor installed here on the base of the Stromberg carburetor. And then they have an injector here for each cylinder on the intake manifold. Very interesting. This car has been fitted with triple Stromberg carburetors. Each carburetor has its own little intake manifold. The car also has headers, a Triumph Tune rocker cover. Here we have a couple Triumph TR6s with the hardtop. With as many cars that are here today, there haven't been too many with the hardtop fitted. Both of these are painted in body color. I think it gives the car a very good look. This Triumph is somewhat of a resto mod. It is powered by the original engine, but it does have custom wheels, a few bits of custom bodywork. It does have the rear bumper on it, but it's been painted body color so that it blends in a bit. Now we have a couple Triumph Heralds. This one is a Herald Estate. This is a very rare car here in the United States. We do have a few Herald convertibles running around, but we do not have these wagons. This is a very neat car. Right-hand drive. Did they make any left-hand drive Herald Estates? I'm not sure. This car is obviously loved by its owner. They have collected all of the books on the car. And look at these interesting rear bumpers. This is a rubber material. It does not have chrome rear bumpers. The Herald next to it also has the same design bumper. This is another really nice example. I'm sure a lot of people fell in love with these cars when James May turned one into a sailboat on Top Gear. Now we have a couple special built race cars. This one is fitted with a six cylinder with triple Weber carburetors. Look at the size of the dual exhaust. Look at those horns. And this car next to it is called the Thunderbolt. It is powered by a four cylinder engine with dual SU carburetors. 
Look at the engine turn dashboard there. It looks great. A little bit of a boat tail rear end look here. And it actually has an operational boot lid. Now we have a few GT6s. This is what you would call a Spit 6. This is a Triumph Spitfire fitted with the engine from a GT6. This is exactly what the Spitfire needed. This would be a very fun car to drive. Next to it is a proper GT6. You can see the fastback hatchback bodywork. These were essentially Spitfires with a fastback body and a six-cylinder engine. Next to that is another convertible with a GT6 engine. Next to that is a GT6 Plus. Now the Plus was the Mark II version of the GT6. They didn't know how many versions they were going to make at the time. And the third version is called the GT6 Mark III. The original one is just called the GT6 really nice looking interior on this one and these cars use the original bodywork of the spitfire as the gt6 mark iii used the later spitfire body now we have a couple triumph stags these have the triumph v8 this engine is basically two tr7 engines that are stuck together this engine is credited with having a lot to do with the downfall of triumph they had access to the great Rover V8 and chose not to put it in the car because of the fighting between all of the companies that were owned by British Leyland. And instead of putting in a reliable and tried and tested engine, they developed their own V8 and it wasn't very good. Here in the United States, these are powered by dual Stromberg carburetors. Now we have some Triumph Spitfires. We'll see all the variations from the originals to the 1500s. Here's an earlier example of the Spitfire. Look at the expansion tank over the carburetors, over the intake manifold there. And the badging indicates this one actually has overdrive. Now we have a group of TR8s. These do not use the same V8 as the Triumph Stag. Looks like this one has a modified engine with an Edelbrock intake and heads. This one also has air conditioning, although it's not hooked up. Other than the engine, these cars are very similar to a TR7. This one has a fuel injected engine. This one is a rare Triumph TR8 Coupe. The others here are convertibles. This one has a non-removable hardtop on it. The last of our popular vote group is the TR7s. The engine bay is much more sparse than the TR8. And again, other than the engine, there's a not a lot of difference between these cars. This TR7 has the petrol injection system. There was only about 500 of these petrol injected spiders built. The majority of them were carbureted, such as this one here. This has the dual Stromberg carburetors. I've now figured out the layout of the show. The cars that we just went through are the popular vote cars. They are not in the Concours, so the voting was done by popular vote. These cars over here are the concourse judged cars. So these are going to be the best of the best in the show. This first class is the preservation class. This is for cars that are unrestored. And the first one here is a 1935 Triumph Gloria Southern Cross. It's hard to believe that this car is unrestored. The paint looks absolutely amazing on this car, as do the seats. You can tell that engine bits on this have been painted. Look at the extremely interesting intake setup here. More interesting things going on inside. This car is carrying two spare tires. What a neat car. 
It shows here on this poster what this car looked like before. This car has been restored, so I don't understand the preservation class of this Concours. Next to it is a Triumph TR6. This one also looks to be restored. It is in very nice shape. Next we have a couple TR4s. There's more TR4s behind here. I'm not sure what class this is. I cannot work out how this show is working. We have a lot of unoriginal stuff stuffed onto the back of this car. The third brake light there, obviously detracting from the look of the car. After the TR4s, we have a TR2. This is a beautifully restored car, but you can tell that the owner does use it. Now we have a Triumph TR7. This one is heavily modified. And then some TR3s and TR2s. Oh, I like that. Yes, 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 that's great. It's a beautiful TR2. This light green color and the red top and interior is very striking. Okay, the sign, I think, confirmed that we were still in the preservation class. If someone can explain this to me, please comment in the comments below. I do have a Triumph TR4 race car, but when I think of a Triumph TR4 street car, this is what I think about right here. What a beautiful car. I do have a model of a Triumph TR4 in this color on my mantle at home. I would love to take this car home. Here are a few of the judges are judging this TR3. Next we have a TR6 and a yellow TR7 and a yellow Triumph Stag. This one is fitted with the hard top. The hard top is removable. And next to that, another TR3. A few more judges doing their work here. This TR3 is a small mouth. Looks like they forgot a panel when they painted the car. It's not quite the same as the rest of the car. But other than that, very nice car. Next is a group of later tier threes. Now the early TR4s. These are the TR4As. They have independent rear suspension, just like the TR6. Now we have the TR6s. All of these have the early chrome bumpers on them. And then we move on to the cars with the rubber bumper overriders. And then the TR7s. This one is a coupe. This one is a convertible. And this one is a coupe with a vinyl top on it. Now we have the TR8s. All of these are Roadsters. These are the early Spitfires. Looks like this one is someone's autocross car. <laughs> Very sticky tires. There's a carbon fiber looking dashboard. 
It even has a hard top on it. Next is the Spitfire 1500 class. These have the same engine and transmission that the later MG Midgets were fitted with. A group of TR6s. This is a really nice metallic paint job. I don't know if the camera can pick that up. There's a lot of pearl in this paint. There are stripes on this car. They're almost ghosted into the paint. And this car is fitted with much larger wheels. These are 16 inch in diameter. There's one single Triumph GT6. This one is a six plus. So this is a Mark II version. This is a Triumph 2500 Estate. This is a fuel injected TR6 engine. Is right hand drive with an automatic transmission. Just like the other estate, this one is very rare here in the United States. Next to that one is an early Triumph Estate. This one has a little four cylinder. A very Spartan interior. Interestingly, this one is left hand drive. You can see where the spare tire is stowed under the boot floor. Lastly, here in the special interest class, we have a 1953 Triumph Renown. These are very rare here in the United States. This one is right-hand drive. The other Renown that I have shown in my videos was a limousine. This is the regular version of the Renown. It's a very neat car. Moving on, we have more TR6s. The majority of these would be carbureted. We did not get the fuel injection versions here. This class is modified triumphs. This one looks really close to the one that I used to own. Mine had the red line tires, just like that. This color is called Mallard Green, and it can look a lot different in pictures. It can look darker or lighter than it really is. You really have to see this color in person to see what it's actually like. Another TR6. Now we have a couple Triumph Vitesse, which I believe are just Triumph Heralds with six cylinder engines. Correct me in the comments below if I'm wrong about that. A couple TR8s. I love the insets on the seats of this car. We saw a couple other TR8s and TR7s like this. This one's been fitted with a four barrel carburetor. Now we have a Triumph Spitfire, a TR250. I did not see a TR5 here today. These have all been TR250s with the carburetors and another Spitfire after that. That's it today from the Vintage Triumph Registers National Car Show. I had a lot of fun and I hope you did too. So if you wanna see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.